Hello, I'm Brinkley Warren, and I'm a proud GSP 11 alumni. I'm going to tell you today about Lean Startup. So who in here knows what Lean Startup is? And has everyone here read the book? Who has not read the book? Okay, so everyone in here knows what it is, yet none of you have read the book. First step, go get the book. It's pretty cheap these days and read it. So um, I'm with Lean Monitor is the name of our company. And instead of telling you a lot about our company, instead I decided to turn it into an educational type of presentation because I just got done reading all of the 2013 innovation research over the holidays and I've compiled it all together, synthesized it to give you some interesting facts. So for the first time in history, 2013, innovation is now at par with operations in the C-suite. Huge, huge development. Innovation is as important to companies and organizations as operations. In the last three years, the most innovative companies have grown 16% more than the least innovative companies. And that has generated on average $250 million more in revenue than the least innovative firms. And that is actually going to be increasing, as we all know, because of exponential growth. And so the gap between the companies that are innovative and those who are not is going to get bigger and wider and wider. So trying to innovate is very difficult. And so what we do at Lean Monitor is we help companies to apply Lean startup methodologies going step by step through the process. Uh, so our system is based on artificial intelligence, which basically becomes like a Siri, um, except for Lean Startup, as opposed to uh, you know, that lady that you talk to on your iPhone. So the idea with Lean Startup is you have an idea, and you're trying to turn it into a profitable idea, right, or project. And it's really difficult to do that, because you're trying to search for a repeatable and scalable business model that entire time. And so uh, Lean Startup helps you to do that, as you all know. So the firms that are the heaviest users of software that helps them innovate actually outperform uh, their other competitors a lot more than companies that don't use software tools. Uh, this was discovered by Deloitte. I know there's a few of you here from Deloitte, maybe. Uh, so this was in uh, your 2013 research report. So uh, what we do is we help companies to scale by combining consulting, uh, software, and uh, basically giving you all of the necessary resources and helping you figure out exactly how you can apply it inside of your company. It's gonna be different for each organization. So we have all the different tools uh, that come from Lean Startup and we've basically programmed them all into the software uh, and we can customize it to you. So the software is based on our uh, AI technology. Um, we've been around since 2005 and Lean Monitor is actually a spin-out company of our parent company, which is called iActive. You might have seen it on the slide that Sandy showed earlier because we give a discount to all uh, SU companies in the community. Um, so if you need any kind of uh, customized uh, AI solution, we're able to provide that. So we took that technology and we put it into Lean Monitor. We have different customers that we serve. We began by serving startup organizations, and then we went into the education market, accelerators, and more and more large co uh, corporations are wanting to go lean, so we're helping them with that. One of the biggest value propositions that we hear from large organizations is that it helps them to monitor uh, the progress of their innovation portfolio based on lean analytics, right? And so instead of measuring things based on how much revenue your company is bringing in each year, we're measuring things that actually matter, right? And so things like, uh, you know, how many customers have you uh, actually validated this value proposition with? Uh, so we have lots of different companies in different segments that we work with, including Fortune 500 companies around the world. Um, and this is the process that we use when we first engage an organization. A lot of times, Organizations say, I want to have lean startup, and we say, okay, well, what does your innovation ecosystem look like currently? And they have absolutely no idea because they don't even have a holistic strategy for innovation. So innovation is as important as operations, yet there's no strategy. This is the first mistake that I see. Um, so innovation is difficult. We know from uh, you know, innovators' dilemma. Um, so why is it difficult? It's because with disruptive innovation, the new people, the new startups that are attacking problems are more successful than incumbents. Incumbents are really good at sustaining innovation, but they're not as good at sort of breakthrough or disruptive innovation. So I've collapsed all of this into what I like to call uh, the school 
of startups, right? So this is the big blue ocean of opportunity. And the startup school of innovation is about making lots of little bets on disruptive and breakthrough ideas that are not necessarily related to what you're already doing at your company. So a lot of companies behave like sharks, right? And so they're out there swimming with all of these little startups swimming around. And the problem is that a shark is a lot different than a school of fish, right? The school of fish is able to pivot incredibly nimble and they mass together to where it becomes very hard for the shark to you know, basically eat the fish. So uh, wh one thing that we see is that large organizations behave like the whale shark, right? So they try to acquire uh, small startups. And so this is only one of the ways that you can actually be innovative, but it's actually not changing the DNA of the organization. So you can try to acquire startups, that's one approach, but a much better approach is to become more like a startup. This is what happens when the whale shark mentality uh, of large organizations mixes with startup culture. So obviously all the startups are like, yeah, get that thing away from me. I'm gonna, st I'm gonna stay here and hang out with the other startup types of people. So number one problem that I see is actually cultural barriers to large organizations becoming more like a startup. Um, and so what you want your innovation ecosystem to become is actually like a coral reef. Instead of going out and acquiring small startup companies, you want to actually bring startup-minded people to you, to your organization. You want to make sure that you have a, a sustaining and continuously productive ecosystem, and that's what we help people do. We started by making software, and it turns out we're actually helping people transform their organization. So some, going back to some interesting facts from 2013. So the CEOs, so uh, 2,700 Fortune 500 CEOs uh, gave their feedback about innovation. This is what they said are the two hardest things about innovating at their company. Number one is the ability to bring innovative ideas to market. Pretty simple. That's exactly what Lean Startup is all about, is bringing new ideas to market. The second one is talent acquisition and retention. So you might be able to see a relationship between these two things, and it comes down to culture. So the first one is pretty easy. It's about farming big ideas, right? So to farm big ideas, you have to behave and act like a farmer. You have to plant the seeds, you have to have the right soil, you have to water it and nurture all the ideas, and then you have to figure out which ones are gonna grow, and then you harvest at the end. You can't harvest until you've tilled the soil. So it's a whole process, and you have to begin at the very beginning. The second one, Talent acquisition and retention is all about culture. Culture is really difficult because when you change culture, you're changing the people, processes, and systems that make up your entire organization. Not easy. So startup is defined by Eric Ries in the book, exactly what products and services are in an organization. This is the definition, and it's exactly what happens in large companies every single day. So startups are already inside of large organizations, and we just try to help you tap into them and make them uh, blossom, essentially. This is the, uh, the loop that we try to get teams to accelerate. It's actually quite different than a waterfalls approach. The way that I see a lot of new product uh, introductions occurring is, uh, you know, business unit comes up with the idea based off of the vice president, the business unit hands it off to designer, the designer hands it off to the development team. One year later, a product hits the market and the customer's like, yeah, that's a terrible product, I'm not gonna buy it. And so the business unit is completely disconnected then from the design team, from the agile uh, you know, engineering team. So companies will say, oh yeah, you know, our engineers are doing things in an agile way, but actually the whole team is, is disconnected. So it's all about trying to connect teams together and when you start doing that is when you get into the culture side of things like I already mentioned. So when it comes to uh, uh, facts about strategy and culture, again, this is based off of 2013 research, 40% of firms, 47% of firms say that culture does not support their innovation strategy and one in five of uh, employees that work at Fortune 500 companies believe that their firm does not deliver the support that they need to successfully innovate, or that they do. So only one in five believes that they're getting the support they need to be innovative. Firms with the strongest alignment between strategy and culture are basically more successful. So if you wanna be successful with innovation, then you should pay attention 
to culture. This is what culture sort of looks like in your organization. The thing about innovation and culture is that it connects to every other aspect of the organization, and that's part of what makes it so difficult, and it's also what makes it really easy to change. So, culture of innovation, it's not just about uh, the outer engineering aspects of it, but it's actually also about inner engineering. It's about behavior and people's mindset, people's attitudes and what they believe. If they believe that their organization is supporting innovation, then they'll actually behave more aligned with that, right? And so, it's all about behavior. So, what we do at Lean Monitor is we help to combine these two things uh, in the engagements that we run in order to help companies to surf the big mama waves of disruptive innovation. And uh, big mama, by the way, is a term from surf culture. It basically just means really awesome waves. And that's all of my time. So I would love to just talk to you more about exactly what we do and how our software and services can help you potentially. Here's my uh, email address. Thank you very much.